The video sync right now has been tracked automatically and believe it or not I didn't use any tracking points to track the footage and I didn't use any application like 3D equalizer, synthize or after effects to create a 3D camera. It took me around 50 minutes to track this shot, it didn't cost me anything and I was just sitting and wait for the shot to be done. Once you install this workflow into your machine you can test it with your own footage and you can run it as many times as you want. Was all this legal? Absolutely fucking not. I know, that was my first reaction as well after I've seen the Polyfuel video on YouTube. Going to leave his YouTube channel in the description, so check him out as he explained more about the tool and how it works in more detail. As a tracking artist working on some of the coolest films with some impossible shots to track, I really wanted to test this workflow to see what it's capable of. So in this video, we're going to cover everything from installation to tracking process and to final result in Blender. I've got together a few examples to test from simple to more complicated tracking shots which I think would be a headache if you have to do them manually. So don't skip ahead because you're gonna miss important information and probably you're gonna get stuck along the way. Okay, let's go! I prepared a list of links you need to download into your machine. You can find them into the video description. First, you need to download ColdMap into your machine. This is a free open source application. Head over to the website and choose between the two download options. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, pick the first option. If not, go for the second one. Download the file into your machine and keep it unzipped for now. Next, we need to download FFmpeg into our machine. We need this step because most photogrammetry applications don't support directly video input, and Colmap is one of them. So click on Windows, choose the Windows builds from Gian, scroll down and pick the release essential version. Download this in the same folder as previous file. For the third step, we need to download the Polyfure script. This is gonna connect all the tools into an automatic workflow. Click on the raw option, a new page will open, then press Ctrl S to save it into your machine. When you save the file, make sure it keeps the path extension and removed any text format that might be added. And finally, to bring the results into a 3D software, we'll use a Blender add-on that allows Blender to read the tracking data. Download this as well and keep it in the same location. In the folder where you download all these files, we're gonna create a folder called Tracking. Inside that folder, create five subfolders. You can make one folder and simply copy paste it until you have five folders. Now rename each one of them to match the structure shown on screen. Well done, half of the work is already completed, the only thing we have to do is to populate this folder. So stay with me, this part is very easy. Go back one level and copy everything except the Blender add-on. Paste those files into the tracking folder so we can start organizing them. The bad file goes into the script folder, unzip the call map file. Everything from the extracted folder needs to be moved out, so cut everything in the folder, then paste everything in the folder called call map. Do the same process with FFmpeg. And once you've moved all the files, you can delete the leftover folders. Now the workflow has been completed and the easy part just starts. You can drop the file into your video folder. Make sure the footage isn't too blurry, doesn't have heavy motion blur, and the stabilization is turned off. After that, go up one level, open the script folder, and run the file. Click yes here. Now the process has started. In the terminal window, you will see the progress happening in real time. The first step is taking your MP4 file and converting it into an image sequence. After that, it begins reconstructing the camera path by analyzing features in each frame. If you don't see any features being detected and it says fail, then the shot won't track properly. In that case, you may need to reshoot or try cutting the clip shorter. After you see this image in the terminal, it means your shot is fully completed. To check the result, we are going to jump straight into Blender. Before we move on, I just want to say thank you for watching. In this way, you support the channel and it motivates me to create more educational content. So, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. I really want to get to 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year and you are the only one who can help me. Now back to the video. When you open Blender, the default scene isn't really needed, so I'm going to delete it. Then go to the top menu, edit and select preferences. On the left, click add-on, 
the first thing we need to do here is to install the add-on we downloaded earlier. Select the zip file, click install and once it's loaded it should appear in the add-on list. Now all you have to do is to go on the file then import and you should see an option called cold map, model or workspace. Click on that and navigate to the folder structure you created earlier. Inside the scene folder the workflow will automatically generate a new folder that matches the name of your file input. Open that folder, select the cold map data and import it. Make sure to tick suppress distortion. Alright, if the data shows in Blender, it means that you successfully track your first shot. Now the real footage has been converted into a point cloud and the camera has been imported into Blender. The orange line you see in the 3D viewport is the 3D camera path extracted directly from the video. It's literally how the camera moved in real life, how cool is that? To view everything through the camera, just go to view, cameras and select set objects as camera. The camera path can look a little bit distracting so I'm going to disable its visibility in the outline. Now if you hit play you can actually watch the reconstruction camera in action. It's insane how accurately this workflow is. If you disable the image plane on the camera, you will see the point cloud animation that Colmap generated. To add a bit of more contrast to the scene, you can change the background color by going to the custom options and click on the gray bar to choose a new color. I'm going to pick black for this example. I'm also going to turn off all the viewport gizmo. Honestly, this is a real nice visual effect. Now make sure to save your Blender file. If you try to add any object into the scene, you'll quickly notice that the whole scene is positioning correctly. I'm going to bring the grid and X, Y, Z axis back so you can see clearly. As you can tell, everything is sitting in the wrong orientation. To fix this, I'll first enable all the hidden layers in the outline and temporarily disable the cube. Then select the point cloud, click on the transfer panel and you'll see the gizmo appear in the middle viewport. Press A to select everything, then Ctrl P to parent the objects together. Now, if you rotate the parent, the entire scene rotates correctly without breaking the camera path. One important note, don't try to undo this step because it can break the whole cold map setup. The FPV shown is honestly a success, it works extremely well and the 3D camera follows the original movement perfectly, even though with all the twists and turns. To check how accurate it really is, we are going to export the cube from the viewport render just to make a quick composition to see how well tracking performs. For this, disable the animated camera so the background disappears. Also keep in mind that the point cloud can't be rendered because it's not an actual geometry, so we just leave it visible in the viewport for now. Now go to the view and click viewport render, then go ahead and render the entire animation. I layered the render on the top of the original footage and here's the final result. The 3D camera is incredibly solid, no shaking, no sliding, no random bobs and is generally impressive. Now let me show you some of the tests I mentioned in the beginning. So first we have the two people running through the underground tunnel. This is an okay shot in terms of complexity. The workflow still managed to track it. The shot is 25 seconds long and solve it a little bit more than an hour which is quite impressive next we have the abandoned car in the field this one failed completely the constantly moving grass in the foreground i think makes it nearly impossible to build stable features for photogrammetry so the camera couldn't be solved the zoom lens also failed it always stopped during the reconstruction phase and never produced a 3d camera i'm not surprised here zoom shots are very difficult tracking shots to do lastly we have a long 360 degree shot of myself where the camera moves in a full circle this one actually tracked very well traditionally this type of shot would be a nightmare to track because there are barely any foreground floor information normally you'd have to add tracking markers on the subject but the workflow was still able to solve it and the pov shot is still my favorite it worked on the first try and the movement is great i would say this workflow isn't perfect it definitely gets the job done with some shots that have parallax but in a professional environment there are many more factors to consider when tracking a camera. For example, the original footage was shot at 24 focal length, but the reconstructed 3D camera shows 28.6 mm. There are also no lens distortion applied to the 3D camera, which means any 3D elements you add will look slightly different. A few other limitations, the point cloud you see in the viewport can't be rendered, so the only way to export is by screen capture and monitor. 
Also exporting the match move camera out of Blender can be a little bit frustrating. The camera settings don't always transfer correctly to the other application. Overall, I think this is a fantastic tool. It works well on normal shots, but for this tutorial, I wanted to really push it and test it through the eyes of a tracking artist. I can definitely see myself using this in a future project. It's surprisingly powerful. And that's me for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this type of content, Please don't forget to subscribe, I really want to get to 5000 subscribers by the end of the year and you are the only one who can help me. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.